autofocus can make or break a shot, especially when your subject decides that it's training for the 100 meter sprint. Canon's latest documentation tackles a very real question. How do you build a sensor that nails autofocus in every direction without making a mess of the layout or the image quality? Well, we found a growing paper trail pointing towards a next generation sensor, something we're likely to see in a future EOS R body. Now, what does this mean for you and me today? Well, I'll break it down for you in plain English with diagrams, a touch of sarcasm, and just enough tech to sound clever. And if you're serious about staying ahead of the latest camera curve, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It tells the YouTube algorithm that you're not just shouting into the void. In Canon's patent application, JP 2025-086414, filed November the 28th, 2023, and published June the 9th, 2025, Canon claims to solve compatibility between autofocus performance and layout efficiency. Right, that phrases what happens when you run engineering notes through machine translation. But this issue is real. Now, if you've ever used a camera to nail focus on vertical lines, but it tends to throw in the towel or have trouble with horizontal lines, that's the problem Canon's addressing. The sensor doesn't have the face detect pixels oriented for both directions. And I know what you're thinking. The Canon EOS R1 has cross-type autofocus points. Is the R1 cheating the system by having pixels sensitive to both axes? No, and Canon does go further. Canon admits earlier sensor designs didn't explain how to play something called a well contact without degrading the image. It's a vital part of the circuit, but if placed poorly, or poorly is the wrong word, if it's not placed accurately, it causes dark current. And that's a fancy term we're gonna start hearing more about where you get extra noise that you didn't ask for. In other words, Canon's trying to give us R1 level autofocus without making us have to spend R1 level money. Each plurality of pixels includes a plurality of photoelectric conversion units sharing a single micro lens. They are separated in the first direction and in the second direction from the first, a floating diffusion region is arranged in one of the between columns or between rows, and a well contact is arranged in the other. And if that made perfect sense, congratulations. You might just be a Canon engineer or an engineer in training, but for the rest of us, every pixel is made up of tiny photoelectric conversion units, and those all share a single micro lens, like a miniature funnel directing light into an electron trench. But this is where the magic happens. Photons hit, electrons wake up, and we get a digital image. In some pixels, the photoelectric conversion units, the little regions that turn the light into a charge and electron charge, are arranged side by side. In others, they're stacked top to bottom. Why? Well, because the autofocus needs to detect contrast in both directions, and the pixel layout is doing a clever little dance to make that possible. Here in figure six, Canon shows this clearly. Some pixels have their photodiodes arranged left to right, others top to bottom. The alternating pattern means that the camera can track detail no matter how the subject moves, AKA that sprinter that we talked about earlier. Effectively, this is mimicking quad pixel autofocus, but without the layout headaches or the bloated sensor real estate. Now here's where things get properly clever. Canon avoids the usual interference and image noise by separating the two components, the floating diffusion FD106, where the charge gets read out, and the well contact 301, which powers the pixel wells. They're placed on opposite axes, so the signal, signal paths can stay clean. Now the layout stays symmetrical, which is important, and the sensor doesn't turn into an overheating mess, which is a good thing for all of us because if it turns into an overheating mess when you try to focus on a bird in flight, well, it's like reorganizing your sock drawer to somehow end up with a faster autofocus system, and that doesn't make any sense. In the Canon EOS R1, Canon uses cross-type pixel arrangements on a stacked CMOS sensor. Some pixels are split horizontally, and others vertically. This is mimicking the classic DSLR-styled cross-type autofocus phase detection system. 
That system gives the system sensitivity to both vertical and horizontal contrast. Very clever and very expensive. But here's the trade-off. The cross-type pixels are arranged in blocks or zones, not spread out evenly. And that makes the layout trickier to manufacture, which means more costs. Now, it can reduce the fill factor, the area of each pixel that actually gathers the light. And it completes the rotating of power that, or sorry, let me say that again. It, com it complicates, not completes, it complicates the routing of power and the signal lines. And then there's the well contact and floating diffusion, essential components that now have to be squeezed to, to, into less than ideal spots. And we've seen several other patent applications recently that talk to various components like this. You might recall the one that I published last week or the week before about the sensor mode. That's to protect all the components on the various layers from static electricity and, of course, moisture ingress. And moisture in ingress. There we go. So again, if all of this stuff is done poorly, you get more dark current, and that's not good. You also get less uniformity. And, of course, at the end, for you and I, what we hate the most is more noise. Like some are complaining that the Canon EOS R5 Mark II gets when shooting in low light at high ISO. So this patent, it solves a good chunk of that. First, it rotates the orientation of the photodiodes at the pixel level, rather than grouping them into blocks. So instead of zones of vertical and horizontal autofocus pixels, you get a smarter, more even distribution across the sensor. Second, it aligns all the surface side circuitry in the same direction. Even if the photodiodes underneath are rotated, the surface electronics like the floating diffusion FD106 and the transfer gate 105 stay uniform across the array. And what that means, and what that means is fewer manufacturing headaches and more consistency between the pixels. By placing the well contact and the floating diffusion on opposite axes, as shown here in figure six and detailed in section 50 to 56 of the patent application, Ken is able to reduce the dark current, which is the noise that we talked about earlier, and also the ability to increase the layout efficiency while maintaining symmetry. And that, well, that leads to better matching between adjacent pixels, all very neat and all very intentional. But Canon didn't stop there. If we take a look at the patent application under paragraph 66, figure nine, they do show configurations where the photodiodes are actually tinted, tinted, tilted 45 degrees, and that adds a diagonal phase detection, meaning that the camera doesn't just see up, down, left, and right, but it sees across the grain as well. It's like giving your autofocus a sixth sense. But here's the bigger picture. Canon isn't just trying to build better cameras, better lenses, or better imaging. The pixel design here isn't limited to mirrorless cameras. It scales. It scales into medical imaging. It scales into smart glasses, automotive systems, and yes, even Canon's medical imaging department where they do x-rays and MRIs. It's one layout, but it has many applications. One thing's interesting. Canon publishes over 30 patent applications every day. And a lot of them are related to photocopiers, printing, and medical. But I think there's a big story brewing in these patent applications. You can go ahead and read Canon rumors and follow the rumors and news that I put out. But sources to those sites, and even into me, aren't always validated or confirmed. What we get with these patent applications is Canon's own words, written by their own employees, signed up by their lawyers, and filed with public authorities. This is research that they've done. And I've already noticed three other patent applications working towards a brand new sensor. And everything that I'm seeing right now is working on the photoelectric conversion unit. And this is the part of the sensor that accepts that incoming light, the photons, and converts it into electrons, into a well, or into a trench which then we can start to interpret and send that information to the image sensor and then actually create the image. What's exciting about this is this patent application doesn't just talk about a similar type system to what we see in the Canon EOS R1, but a more advanced system, 
a more advanced system that we can see in upcoming cameras. Maybe not today, but definitely tomorrow. This is how Canon became a leader in the camera world, and it's what needed for Canon to take back their position as the number one in mirrorless and take that crown back from Sony. And if you would like to stay in the know, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like, and we'll keep bringing you the tech and the latest patent applications before you hear anything that hits the shelves. And if you're part of the 1% of the 1% that wants to know a little bit more of behind the scenes, well then go ahead and click that join button and choose one of the three membership levels. Now, membership level one is $1.99 a month, and what that gives you is, well, loyalty badges and priority read and responding to comments. $9.99, well, that's the newest one that I brought to the scene, and that one's all about getting you behind the scenes, where you can ask me questions and I'll respond and give you a video. And I try to put out at least one video a week taking you behind the scenes. Your questions get put into videos. And I don't do a lot of polishing. Often they're shot with my iPhone or maybe even the 70D, giving you kind of a gritty grainy look at as to what video looks like before I polished it off like this one here. Don't feel pressured that you have to join. I try to do everything I can free as well. I'm spending a bit more time creating these videos and I'm covering more of them, especially patent applications, trying to do at least one a week. And unfortunately, that's taking me away from something I really enjoy and that's responding to the comments. So I created these two extra membership levels to help give priority to those who really do want to engage in this channel. And I know many of you do. I, I just wish I had more time. but. In five years, I plan to retire from my day job, which means I get to do this full time. And then, well, wake up, check the news, have breakfast, shoot a video, or maybe go for a walk along the ocean. After I've done a walk along the ocean, come back, answer some questions, or maybe take my phone with me and respond to comments by the beach. That seems a whole lot more exciting than sitting in my house in the dark working at a computer five years away. The best way to fill that time is to work hard, work smart, enjoy this job, which I do, and of course provide value to my day job by being busy both there and here and with my family. The time's going to fly, but with value added activities. I'm sorry, I know I'm rambling a little bit. Maybe this is better safe for one of those behind the scenes things, but I value you watching and watching to the very end. And some of you have commented, yes, I did watch to the end. I do appreciate it. But what's more important is I provide you with content to where you want to watch to the end. Let me know what you think of this patent application video. I've tried a few things a little bit differently this time to try and make it, well, better and I'm going to shoot a behind the scenes video right after this so that the insiders will know what it is I did, but see if you can guess anyhow. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great day, a great week, and we'll see you again soon.